Hello and welcome once again to another edition of the Spike Ridgely Show. I'm your host, Dave Sheets. With me is the head coach of the Masson Tiger baseball team, Spike Ridgely. Spike, welcome back to the show. Thanks. Spike, your Tigers are now 13 and 6 after playing three more games this past week. Let's go back to last Wednesday's home win over Central Catholic. You knocked off the Crusaders 4 to 1. Uh, tell us more about that game. Yeah, that, you know, that was educator night for us, so we got a chance to honor a few teachers. Our seniors picked a few teachers to honor, and that was really neat. Anytime we get a chance to do that, because um, they're such a big part of the development of our guys. Uh, so we're really happy to be able to do that. And then, you know, we played a good Central Catholic team, and we got a great start from our pitcher, Christian. Uh, and then we scored a few runs, scattered a few runs throughout, and really played a, a solid defense that night and was able to come away with a win that was really was needed at that point from, from a couple of losses earlier in the previous week. You were actually able then to play again on Thursday back home, and you knocked off a good new Philadelphia team one to nothing. That had to be a real nail-biter nail there. Yeah, you know, we didn't know a whole lot about them. Uh, again, we, we were staring at the weather Friday and Saturday, and it was, we, we were pretty sure we weren't going to get to play. I put a message out trying to find somebody to play on Thursday because we were trying, you know, we got the educator thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is really important to us, and we knew we still needed to, we wanted to make sure we got our senior night in. So we put a message out. I, I texted, you know, many different people, and, and he jumped right on it. Um, he's a uh, good coach, so we expected a battle. And, and any time you pick somebody up late and they're willing to come to your place, they usually got a pretty good team. So we got a chance to see. They said it was their number two. It sure looked like a number one to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, the guy was really good. He pitched. I think he threw, I think he threw seven innings, I think, that night. Uh, we got a great start from, from Drew Stitt. He threw nine innings for us and didn't get a decision. It's not too many times you see a 0-0 game mm -hmm. in a high school game going into the 10th inning. Mm -hmm. So tournament atmosphere, incredibly important for the development of our team to be in that type of situation. Our guys really, really stepped up. Both pitchers were incredible all night long. And we, I think I told the guys in the third or fourth inning, I said, guys, one run is going to be enough tonight. Mm -hmm. You could just feel it from the defense. And we just we had to use small ball a little bit to move runners and how many times we had guys in scoring position and couldn't get them in, so did they. You know, and it finally broke through in the 10th, which is probably good because it was getting dark. Mm -hmm. So just a, a good win for us and, and a better, even better atmosphere, important atmosphere for us to be in. So you got that game in and then the weather forecasters were right. Uh, rained out Friday, rained out Saturday. Yeah. Came back this past Monday, Central Catholic again, this time over at their place and a five to one win. Yeah. you know. Hats off to the team for, for being able to do that. It's hard to beat a team twice for in, you know, in the first place. It's hard to go over there and win with the tradition and uh, just the competitiveness that they always mm -hmm. bring. We match their energy right away. And then the, you know, the third thing we had to overcome is you know, Christian had just started against them five days earlier. And you know, being independent, we we put our guy out there when it's his turn. Mm -hmm. You know, because we can't get off on our rotation, otherwise it messes up the games later in the week. So he had to go again against a lineup that was really familiar with him, uh, and he pitched really well. He wasn't sharp early. I think he would tell you that. He battled through it, and uh, really, really had a solid out. He really settled in second, third inning, and, and, and pitched well for us. We jumped on him quick in the first inning, was able to score a couple runs, and that held up. So uh, good quality opponent. We respect those guys. It was nice, nice to be able to come away with the win. So the season is winding down, and the Division I uh, tournament drawing took place this past Sunday. We'll talk more with Spike about that in just a few moments. Back with more on the Spike Ridgely Show after this timeout. At MCTV, we listen to your needs. That's why our internet options deliver the speed and reliability you don't just want, but you need. Upgrade your internet service to give your in-home Wi-Fi an extra boost. More data running through your home means you can power more devices, spend less time buffering, and more time connected to what matters most. Upgrade today. Give us a call or contact us online. MCTV. We go the extra smile. Welcome back to the Spike Ridgely Show. The Tiger player joining us this, this week is junior pitcher Christian Marsh. Christian, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. You bet. What are your earliest memories of playing the sport of baseball, and who taught you the game? Uh, I was around four or five, just playing anywhere, everywhere I can, can be. Um, my mom and dad just hand me a ball and glove, go, go out in the backyard throw. That's pretty much it. What kind of goals did you set for yourself before this season started? 
Uh, just to give my team the best shot. Just go out there, give it my all every game. This past Monday, you pitched a complete game, earned the win at Central Catholic, gave up just one run on five hits. What was the key for you in that performance? Uh, I knew the guys behind me. They had my back. It's every time. Um, but just go in there, throw strikes, give my team a shot. Your record is now 4-1 and one with a, a great 2.06 ERA. What is your overall mindset when you go to the mound? Um, like I said, just throw strikes, let the defense play their game. Do you have a go-to pitch you like to throw when you absolutely need to get a strike out or an out in general? Uh, slider. Slider's my thing. Okay. Have you had a chance to uh, change that up at all or the way you throw it or the situations you throw it? Uh, 0-2. It went out a little bit. Don't let him hit it. Sounds good. And finally, what are, uh, who, who are some of the other guys on the team that you look up to for leadership on this team? Uh, Shane, he's, yeah, he's a senior. He's coming back. He knows what he's been through. Mm -hmm. um, Matt, he's been there last year. And Gavin, Gavin, he knows the game. Okay. And do you consider yourself a leader as well? Yeah. I like being around the guys, just having fun. All the guys come with me. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, Christian Marsh joining us on the show this week. Good luck the rest of the season. And the coach, Spike Ridgely, will rejoin us on the program after this message. Hello, and welcome to the Stark County Humane Society. Today we're going to give you a few pointers when considering adopting a new furry friend. All animals here at the Stark County Humane Society are spayed, neutered, microchipped, vaccinated, dewormed, and if old enough, heartworm tested for our canine friends. Adopters will receive a free exam within two weeks of adoption at local veterinarian hospitals. We encourage all adopters to take full advantage of this. A one-time adoption fee is required for your new furry friend. When you adopt, you get an awesome adoption packet that includes treats for your new fur baby and savings for you. But this is not where the cost of adoption stops. Did you know the average cost of an animal like a new puppy or kitten can cost up to $500 annually? This includes annual veterinary visits, preventative care, and everyday supplies like crate, litter, food, toys. But I hope this doesn't scare you away. Adopting an animal is a huge responsibility and a commitment. Please take the time to consider the cost of adopting a new pet into your family today. I hope to see you soon at the Stark County Humane Society. Please visit our website or visit us on social media for more information. Welcome back to the Spike Ridgely Show. I'm your host, Dave Sheets, along with Tiger Manager Spike Ridgely. And we just spoke with junior pitcher Christian Marsh in our last segment. Uh, how would you describe, describe Christian's impact on this year's team? Yeah, you know, he, he's one of the guys that, uh, that one of the few guys that was around last year all the time. Uh, so, you know, very young team, only a couple guys in that dugout that experienced last year's team. And he was one of them. Uh, and he was a team guy last year. I wasn't getting him a lot of innings last year. And I remember going to him and say, hey, listen, buddy, you know, what do you think? Maybe we move you down and throw a little bit. He said, coach, I want to be here. I want to be here. You know, he knew he was going to go down there and play more. Uh, and the fact is, we just couldn't send him because there, he was, we were a couple pitches away from needing him. It just mm. didn't happen a whole lot last year, though, with the team that we had. So, you know, he's, he's starting to develop into a leader, kind of a quiet leader. Um, and he's a guy that works really fast on the mound, so the defense is engaged and, and, and really locked in uh, when they know that the ball – and he pitches the contact. So, game kind of goes fast when he's there. You know, and that's it's something that I think our guys enjoy when when he's out there because they know they're going to get. He throws a lot of ground ball outs, and uh, gives our guys a chance to play that defense behind them, and they, and they have. So we head into the what I would say is your last week of the regular mm -hmm. season, a full week, and it uh, has a, a certain federal league flavor to it mm -hmm. because of some rainouts and so forth. Let's look at your schedule. Uh, we taped the show on Tuesday, Wednesday night, a road game at Lake. Yeah, it, it's hard to win over there. We, you know, we, we call that the Bermuda Triangle <laughs> over there, it, it, if you see where the field's located back mm -hmm. in there. It's a nice field. It's a nice, nice setup, uh, but it's tough. It's, it's, it's been typically tough to go over there and win. They're always solid. They were, I think they were the fifth or sixth seed. They were ahead of us 
Um, and we expect a, a battle, no doubt. They're on their bye week, so we'll see one of their best two. I'm assuming they'll throw one of them tonight. Uh, I think they play Louisville tonight, mm -hmm. and then tomorrow we'll get the other guys. So we're looking forward to the battle. It'll be a great atmosphere. Your game last Friday against Jackson was rained out, and you were able to reschedule that. Jackson comes to the Duck on Thursday. Yeah, uh, it, it's you know our, our our focus right now is squarely on Lake, but we're we're certainly looking forward to the opportunity uh, to competing against a very good team. I think they were the two seed, uh, maybe 16 and three overall. It's it's going to be a great test for us in another atmosphere that we need to be in. You know, our goal specifically late in the year is to try to get into those atmospheres, to get the kids used to those a little bit and kind of get more comfortable with being uncomfortable. So that's what we're looking for. Saturday at Hoover, uh, another test against the Vikings. Yeah, you know, we figured we'd play the, the, the top couple of teams in the Federal League. Why not, you know, play all three of them, right, in one <laughs> week? So, no, a uh, lot of respect for, for Coach Ashby. Um, you know, they're, they're always a very good team. They got two Division one, legitimate Division one pitchers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we'll get to see one of them or not Saturday. Maybe for an inning or two. It depends on how he he pitched this week. I think they had league this week, but you know, and then he's lining up for the tournament next week as well. So it'll be a, another good opponent for us to go against. Right, you know, right before we get into the tournament play. And then uh, again, if the weather holds, uh, a scheduled game Monday at Ashland. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, Ashland. I don't know as much about them. Um, I, I think they're in the middle of the pack with their seed. Uh, I, I'm not sure a whole lot. We, we scheduled that game. Uh, it's an opponent we used to play, mm -hmm. and we're trying to get those guys back into that home, home and home every other year. Mm -hmm. uh, we were going to try to play that game at the new Ashland Stadium over there, but uh, they, they haven't had many home. I think they've only had four home games, so we agreed to go over and play them at their place. So uh, I, I, from what I know of their coach, they'll be well coached. Uh, we played him a few years ago when he was there. It was his first year. So looking forward to the opportunity of getting on the road, getting on a bus, and having to go a little distance because, you know, that's, that could end up being what happens. So next week we get into tournament play, and I know players, coaches, everybody gets excited about that. Yeah. The Division I sectional district tournament drawing took place this past Sunday. The three super sectional sites for Division I locally are Canton, Euclid, and Macedonia. The overall number one seed for our area is Walsh Jesuit and they are in the Macedonia district. Your Tigers also in that same district, and you are the number nine seed. Can you tell us a little bit about how that all came about? Yeah, you know, I think it was fair. I, th I think the, the voting came out pretty fair. I think, you know, with our record and where we're at sitting in, in the middle of those teams, it, it looks right when mm -hmm. you look at those top 10 teams or so. Um, that's out of 36, so we were able to still have a bye. Um, and, you know, typically we try to stay down here in Canton. Uh, when it was our turn, all of those buys were taken. Mm -hmm. um, there was only one set of buys left, but it was a double buy where you're going to be going against somebody's number one. Um, so we stayed away from that. We, we thought our best chance for our team um, you know, was to stay away from that double buy and have an opportunity to throw our number one against somebody's number two after the buy. So we took that, and, and it's going to be uh, whoever wins that game coming up to play us, it's going to be a tough game. So you will face the winner of Glen Oak and Perry, and that'll be a home game for the Tigers on Thursday, May 19th at 5 o'clock. Uh, a little bit of a luxury that you've seen both those teams? Yeah, I think that goes both ways. I think sometimes when you've seen both teams, then you know more about each other. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to be less surprise. I mean, they know if, if we're getting into a bunt situation that we're probably going to bunt. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know some of the things we like to do as we do them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think sometimes when you play against a team that doesn't know as much about you, you can kind of maybe surprise them a little bit here and there. But, but yeah, it, it, tons of respect for both teams. Um, played them both, and, and it's, we know it's, it's going to be a, a, a difficult task, and we're looking forward to the opportunity. Well, we look forward to watching your team uh, play out the rest of the uh, regular season schedule and into next week, and we'll catch up again next week then. Spike Ridgely joining us on the Spike Ridgely Show, and I'm your host Dave Sheets, along with uh, thankfulness to Christian March for joining us on the program this week. We will see you next week, and as always, go Tigers!